Female lawmakers shed tears of joy as the Scottish Parliament passed a measure to provide free sanitary pads, tampons and other feminine products to women across the nation. The World First is the culmination of a three-year campaign led by Labour MP Monica Lennon. We have come a long way on this journey from 2016 when I first asked questions in Parliament about period poverty. I am beyond proud that Scotland is leading the way and we have moved at a fast pace in a short space of time. Under the new law, Scotland will work with local authorities to distribute period products to people who need them. Women will be able to choose the products they want and can get them delivered to their homes. Activists say the measure is a blessing to people struggling to make ends meet, particularly during the pandemic. People have used things such as socks, newspaper, even babies' nappies that have been used and washed out. Nobody should have to have a period like that. Nobody should have to experience such trauma during a very healthy bodily function. You know, it's the reason we all exist. In 2018, Scotland started providing free feminine products at schools at a cost of $7 million a year. Last year, the government allocated $5 million to supply libraries and recreational centres. The new measure is expected to cost taxpayers close to $12 million a year. The additional expense had initially spooked lawmakers, but in the end, it passed unanimously. Proud to vote for this groundbreaking legislation, making Scotland the first country in the world to provide free period products for all who need them, an important policy for women and girls. Free period products are also available at schools in England and New Zealand. But the problem is most dire in poor countries like India, where more than a third of women have used old rags, leaves and even mud and soil. And in Kenya, half of young girls don't have access to these products at all, resulting in weeks' worth of missed school days every year. Lennon and other Scottish lawmakers say they're happy to lead the way and hope other governments follow soon. Laila Humaira, TRT World. Well, for more, let's go to Gemma Abbott in London. She's an activist and director of the non-profit group Free Periods. Welcome to the program, Gemma. Now, this is a historic step for Scotland and for the rest of the world, really. It has been a long fight because the legislation has been debated for the last three years. Now it's become law. Just how significant is this? I think it's hugely significant and, and really tremendously good news that the bill passed unanimously yesterday. As you say, it's been a long fight. And really, this bill seeks to redress an issue that should never have existed because period, period products are an utterly essential product for anyone that, that has a period, any woman or girls or others who menstruate. And I think that any society that wants every member to be able to participate fully needs to accept that those needs of those people who have periods need to be met. Now, this new law aims to reduce uh, so-called period poverty. Can you just explain to us uh, what that is exactly and how women and girls, uh, I guess in Scotland, but also around the world are affected by it? Yes, yeah, sure. So when people talk about period poverty, they're usually talking about an issue that people have financially, so an inability to afford the period products that they need. Um, I think period poverty can also be used to describe just a lack of access to products generally. So sometimes young people in particular will struggle to access the menstrual products they need because um, of the home in which they're living. Perhaps they're not available. They don't feel like they can talk about it culturally. It's not always a financial reason, but that does tend to, to be the focus. And when you know, a person can't access those products, they are left to try to cope through their period every month um, by making do, by using makeshift products, using toilet paper or rags, or even nappies, as Gabby from Bloody Good Period mentioned in your video. And that is just so appalling to have to go through your period without having the utterly vital products that you need to be able to do that with dignity and with comfort and in a way that's good for your health is incredibly damaging to, to anybody who experiences it. We know this new law only applies in Scotland, but what progress is being made for a similar measure in, say, England and the rest of the UK? Well, where, where Scotland have led, we have seen 
others follow, which is one of the reasons why putting this um, scheme on a legislative footing is so important. So, um, for example, as you've mentioned, in Scotland, free products have been available under a non-statutory scheme um, in schools since August 2018 and in local authority public buildings since um, January 2019. And immediately following those um, policies, we saw Wales following suit and the Welsh government taking similar steps, albeit on a non-statutory basis. In England, unfortunately, we've had to fight that bit harder. We have, I think it's fair to say, a less progressive government in areas like this. And it was really only after the threat of legal action that the government um, at Westminster caved and agreed to provide funding for free menstrual products in schools. But we have at least got that far. So in January of this year, a scheme launched in England to provide funding for free period products in all state maintained schools and colleges across the country. And at the moment, we're, we're fighting really hard just to raise awareness of that scheme and to encourage all of those eligible institutions to sign up. But I think now we can see how important and how po that it's possible um, for a government in the UK to take this step legislatively. And we will certainly be lobbying very hard in Westminster and beyond um, to see similar steps taken in England. Okay, best of luck with that campaign. Gemma Abbott, thank you again for joining us from London.